Welcome back to One Piece Anime Review, episode number 53. This one reviewing the 840th episode of the anime and the 907th chapter of the manga. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, this episode adapts chapters, uh, chap the uh, pages. 1719 of chapter 869 and pages 2 to 13 of chapter 870. And this episode was called Cutting the Father the Son the Relationship, Sanji and Judge. Yeah, that's kind of a minor thing with this episode. Yeah, it takes up only one scene the confrontation between Judge and Sanji after Sanji saves him. Mostly, this episode is just. Big Mom, well first, Big Mom comes back to her senses, and then she's, when she hears about Benji's betrayal, she climbs up Benji's castle form, and beats the living crap out of him, and basically almost nearly killing Benj. So, the best way to sort of solve the problem is to have, I mean, he come with an interesting plan, have him go back to human form, and have Caesar fly him off the thing so he can get away. An interesting plan, but you gotta deal with the fact that they gotta deal with distractions. So the Jumper 66 volunteer to go out there. The False Muff family goes out there to sort of be a distraction, help them basically escape. And of course, the whole thing of Sanji and Judge confronting each other. Yeah, that's actually in one scene, and that was kind of like the driving point with the title. But it only takes up a good like five minutes of screen time. Yeah, you see, it looks like San uh, Judge's talking to Sanji, confronting him about why did he save him, because he said his father would be sad. So, and so it looks like he's actually going to punch him, because, well, Sanji doesn't usually throw punches, he usually kicks people a lot, so, he said, punching him, he's about to get to him, and he just grabs his collar, drags him to his knees, and tells him, don't ever approach me again, and I will never acknowledge you as, uh, and never acknowledge me as your son, like, kind of basically repeating what happened 13 years prior. And he agrees. Surprisingly. Probably because he made his son's life a living hell. And he refers to him as the failure. Mm -hmm. So that's when they go out. Caesar Chloris gets coerced to go out there due to the fact Bench has his heart. Yep. And of course, the episode ends with. Of course, Luffy volunteers to help him as well. Of course, that, that's going to take up a good bulk of the next episode as well. Which, next week's episode. Is gonna be called Escape from the Tea Party, Luffy versus Big Mom. Me, I mean, that's gonna be quite interesting. Uh, let's see. I would say the one character who probably gets. I mean, I got. I got was surprised to see Brooke. One of the most funniest things Brooke does in the episode. Somehow, in Benji's castle, he was able to get tea, and you see him drinking it. Asked for how he got the tea. I have no idea. But I thought it was one of the most interesting things of the whole episode. Seeing him drink tea of all things. Yeah, he just sitting there. He's just standing there drinking tea. I mean, also, uh, Clifton, Lola's sister, she also goes out to confront her mother, tell her to stop because she's in there along with her, with her, with her, uh, with her son, Ben, uh, Pez. Yeah, her and Benja's son. Now, these are the changes they make from the actual... Uh, let's see. This is what they edit. I mean, uh, the stop screaming and Katakuri informing her of Ben's betrayal. Uh, releasing Fire uh, Aura. And the whole thing of... And there's also seeing Clifton handing Vito Pez. Yeah, that's actually something... That's the manga, the anime, and he's Clifton, and the one here. But now, in the case of Luffy doing the Clifton, there's a couple reasons why that he did it. One, because he's actually a good friend, because he's a friend, friends with her sister, and two, because the fact that well, he doesn't want to see Clifton get hurt, because he does care about women, and as far as I know. Over the course of the franchise, he's never actually technically, like, really punched a woman. He's fought a couple women during the Amazon Lily arc, 
But he's never actually hit any women. Though he's actually he's going to hit Big Mom in the next episode. That's going to be cool. And Luffy in his fourth gear form. Yeah. Zoe so assumes this again. I think this is actually the third or fourth time. This, this is actually the second opponent he actually used uh, gear four against. Which is going to be interesting for next week's episode. Mm -hmm. Alright, so... And of course, Derma 66 also take on Big Mom as well. All right, now for on this newest chapter of the manga. Chapter number 907, The Empty Throne. And of course, that does play a small role in this chapter. The chapter starts out with Orbis basically just shooting up, like having his... Uh, the nation he was affiliated with basically turning against them. Yeah, saying thank you for everything. And then we see, we go, we go to Whole Cake Island. First time in a few chapters we've actually seen this place. And apparently Big Mom is doing fine since what well, everybody, and of course she has a conversation, conversation with Kaiju. He says, I know that'll be a huge step, Kaiju. And we see, Kai, apparently he's, she's talking to Kaiju. Uh, if he has some kind of communication thing. Oh yeah, it's uh, via the Transmara Snail. Yep. And then we see one person, Kaizu. I think this is the first time post time skip I've seen this guy. I mean, last time I saw this guy was back during Marine Ford. Yeah. Though he didn't show up in the last chapter, which is surprising. Also, the Mohawk guy, I don't remember this guy's name, but he was an Amazon Lily. And he was also, he, he popped up a few times in pre time skip. He showed up first in Aerosa Lobby, then he showed up in Amazon Lily, he showed up in Marine Ford. He showed up for Return of Sabaody. This is the first time to Return of Sabaody since he showed up here. He's one of two characters uh, who makes his epic re one of several characters epic return this very chapter first time in a while. And then we see more stuff with Garp and talk about Sanji. Uh, a bunch of the ammo just drinking. And we see the Empty Throne itself, which this is what it looks like. Yeah, that's the Empty Throne. No one sits on this damn thing. Yeah, and Sherry from the kingdom where Luffy comes from. Yeah, he really wants to do that. And then, uh... And, of course, this idiot... And, then of course, this jerk of a guy comes back. I'm like, okay. I don't have a problem with Oda bringing this guy. But, man, this guy is a big jerk. Who is this guy? This is St. Charles, the big douchey guy who showed up during the Sabo Oda. I mean... Yeah, the Celestial Dragons are written to be the most biggest douchebags in the history of One Piece. They're worse than the Five Elder Stars. And Revolution Army, I'm glad the fact that Revolution Army wants to take these guys like, it's how terrible they are. Though they do show up one. And then we see, for the first time in quite some time, we see Rob Lucci. Yep. Who is the leader of CP0, which is interesting. We have Kata, who is the guy with the nose. I think that's it, yeah, CP0. I think this, yeah, the CP0 did show up in Dress Rosa, but it's great to see Rob Lucci because he was probably by far one of the best villains of Eddard's Lobby. He's probably the best villain of the entire arc, but better than that idiot he was working for. Which, uh, oh yeah, Sanji referred to him as the Pigeon Guy. Yeah, and he also has the ability to turn into a, a gazelle. Yep. And then we see uh, Vivi look like she's held down. And, of course, she's telling, uh, says, Relisha, or who she's my friend. And, of course, wait, Princess of Alabasta. And, of course, uh, King Neptune is basically very upset of how uh, the Celestial Dragons are acting. And then and then Charles gets punched. Uh, we don't see at this point who it is, but it's not one, it's not a pirate. Nope, it's somebody you don't expect. I'll show you in a minute. And then we, and it turns out it's actually this guy, Don Quis Midsgard, who actually was the... Uh, Celestial Dragon show up in that flashback during uh, Fishman Island. Mm -hmm. Yep, this guy right here. Yeah, I get a good picture of him. I know it's glare, but I'm sorry about that. But uh, if I can hold the right spot here, yeah, him. And then we see the five older stars. First time since Arrow's a lot. Uh, first time since Dress Rosa. Yes, guys. And they're meeting with. Of all people, red hair shanks. Wow. That's a shocking cliffhanger right there. Though, 
They didn't resolve that, that very strange cliffhanger from the last chapter where we see a giant straw hat. Yeah, that is not brought up in this whole chapter at all. But this was by far a really damn good chapter. Yeah, and yeah, this particular Celestial Dragon, he's the one who punched him. And he says, uh, Queen Otomi, who was, who was uh, K Queen, uh, King Neptune's uh, late wife, and Prince Sarahoshi and, the, and her three brothers' mother, she sa he says... The now deceased queen uh, or her open up my eyes. She made me human. I want to help you as much as I can. Yeah. I like the fact we have one such dragon who's actually really a nice guy. Hmm? Yeah, and I'm kind of like, okay, why does he think he wants to put... Uh, Chains on the princess of Fishman Island. She's one of the heirs to the throne. What the heck is this guy doing? Because oh, she sees a mermaid. He sees a giant mermaid. He thinks, oh yeah, that must be that must be. A sl he wants to buy that thing. Put her in chains. I'm like, seriously, um, dude, what the heck is your problem? I'm glad the fact that Celestial Dragon really punched him. I'm glad the fact that Vivi and Rebecca basically tried to stand up for Sarah Hoshi because they became good friends and they start they they started good, they became friends last chapter, which was great. So. Good chapter, good, uh, great ending, and I like the fact St. Charles, this douche of a man, got punched. I was so happy to see that. I mean, he's by far the second slash dragon could punch anyways. I think Luffy, I think, actually, I think this is this is the second time he's been punched in the face. The only time I can think he's been punched is when Luffy punched back during the sub Odi arc. And seeing the Slash Dragons, okay, fine. And I like the continuity nod to... Uh, the flashback of Fishman Island. That this is the same such dragon from that particular arc. Good. And overall, great chapter. 9.5 out of 10. Alright, so that's it for this particular review. Stay tuned next week for episode 53. Now, the thing to not say on hiatus next week. So basically, possibly it could be 908 next week. And along with the review of chapter of episode 841 of the manga, anime. Okay? Which is probably going to finish up the last four pages of chapter 870. And it's going to start with chapter 871. Alright? So, until we see you in the next review, which I'm going to do a comic corner right after this one, okay? Until we see you over there. Bye.